Dr. Garasi, I present Muriel Siebert for the degree of Doctor of Letters and Norris Kauser. Trustees Louise Kaufman and Richard Herberger will assist with placing the hood on the shoulders of Muriel Siebert. Muriel Siebert is the founder and president of the brokerage firm that bears her name. She established the firm in 1967 and in so doing became the first woman member of the New York Stock Exchange. And then in 1975, she transformed that firm into a discount brokerage house on the very first day that stock exchange members were permitted to negotiate commissions. Muriel Siebert has always been a woman of action. One of her most daring moves made historic waves in 1967 when she applied to become the first woman member of the New York Stock Exchange. Although she had risen to a partnership in a leading Wall Street brokerage firm, her application was ridiculed and opposed by many men on Wall Street. But Muriel Siebert refused to take no for an answer, and on December 28, 1967, after a long struggle and numerous roadblocks, she was finally elected to membership on the New York Stock Exchange, its first female member. Ms. Siebert took another daring risk on May 1, 1975, when a new federal law abolished fixed commissions. She announced that Muriel Siebert and Company would become a discount commission house. A full-page newspaper ad featured a photo of Ms. Siebert cutting a $100 bill in half. Wall Street's reaction was quick and hostile. The clearinghouse with which she had long been associated dropped her instantly, and her firm faced SEC expulsion in 60 days if she could not find another house to clear the firm's transactions. But Ms. Siebert managed the 30-day extension, signed up another clearinghouse just before the deadline, and led her company to dramatic success in the new world of discount brokerage. In 1977, Ms. Siebert took a leave of absence from her firm to serve five years as the first woman superintendent of banking for the state of New York under Governor Hugh Carey. As such, she was responsible for the safety and soundness of not only the banks, but also other financial institutions in New York State. Her first years in this post coincided with perilous challenges to all banks, large and small. Interest rates climbed steeply during most of those years, and bank failures became common across the country. To prevent bankruptcies in New York State, Ms. Siebert acted swiftly. She forced banks to merge and persuaded stronger institutions to help weaker ones. She reorganized troubled banks and demanded drastic measures to keep them afloat, such as compelling one bank president to cut his annual salary in half. Her daring creativity paid off. Despite bank failures throughout the country, not one bank in New York State failed under her tenure. For Muriel Siebert, the secret to making a difference is to care deeply about how America's big institutions affect the lives of ordinary people. For example, in 1999, while president of the New York Women's Agenda, a coalition of over 100 women's organizations, Muriel Siebert developed a personal finance program to improve the financial literacy of our nation's young people. The program was initially designed to teach two essential financial management skills, managing a checkbook and understanding the use and abuse of credit cards. The program is currently being taught in New York City high schools as part of the economics curriculum for seniors and has recently been expanded to include such topics as the basics of banking, budgeting, taxes, insurance, investing, and more. A coalition of the nation's largest urban schools has distributed the program to each of its 64 member cities. 
Ms. Siebert has also, and very understandably, received countless awards and honors throughout her career. It is with pride and pleasure that we here at Wagner College honor her as well. With the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Wagner College and under the concurrence of the laws of the State of New York, I hereby confer upon you, Uriel Siebert, the degree of Doctor of Letters, honoris causa, and thereby declare that your name forever be inscribed on the roll of Wagner College's most esteemed alumni. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. I appreciate your very gracious introduction. I'd like to say something to the graduating class of 2010. This is a great day for you. You have graduated from college. Congratulations on this momentous occasion. You did it. No one else did it. You did it. Looking out on you makes, on this marvelous group of graduates, makes me feel very proud. You have chosen to pursue your education from a very distinguished, highly regarded institution. I am deeply honored to receive an honorary doctorate from Wagner College and join your graduating class. I appreciate this honor of sharing my thoughts with you as commencement speaker. As a graduate, you have already, you're ahead of me. I did not graduate and I do not have a degree from college. But I uh, was going to college. My father was a dentist. He also had a degree in engineering and cancer took hold and I could not stand to see what was going on at home. He died at 52, and I was attending college, but I was cutting class and playing bridge. I did not get a college degree, but I did win some master points. I would like to share some of my dreams with you. I arrived in New York with $500 and a used Studebaker. Remember that car that had the windows all the way around? Well, I drove here from Cleveland, Ohio. My sister had moved here, and I knew I had a place to call home and sleep. It was my sister's couch. Now let me tell you what happened a year ago. The UN had their International Women's Day and I was the chosen honored person. And it was a wonderful honor and I was among women in politics and the industry. It was the first time that the UN had really typed this all over the world and in different languages. Well, I closed my speech at the UN, and I'll tell you a secret, I had applied for the UN for a job first before I went to Wall Street, but I did not get it because I did not have two languages. So I thank the UN for not hiring me over 40 years ago. <laughs> Instead, I started as a trainee in research at $65 a week in Beijing Company. And two analysts, you see on Wall Street, when things are good, they expand the research department. When things are bad, they shrink it. Well, two analysts were allowed to dump 
industries on the new trainee. 